Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a day in the life living here in the Florida Keys. For those of you that are new, my name is Clay. This is Life by the Bow. My buddy Nick is behind the camera right now. And first things first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head out in our boat and we're gonna go try to catch some live bait in search of catching bigger fish that we can bring back to the house here and cook up and show you guys exactly how to do it. Um, if you guys are new, hit that subscribe button because we come out with good, high quality content on a weekly basis. Promise you guys won't be disappointed. But we're gonna go acquire that bait, first things first. After that, we're gonna come back and pick up my wife, Stephanie, once she gets home from work. And we're just gonna see what we can put together. So let's get going. pulled up in one of our little bait spots right here, back up in a little basin. And we're gonna start throwing the net. It's just Nick and I, so you might get some GoPro angles here, but hey, better than nothing. But if we can get some of these pilchard baits, it would be perfect. It would make for a great afternoon. So we're gonna get the net all loaded up. Let's roll, baby, let's do it. Got some. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. I know. So I just hopped on the boat and let me tell you, after getting off of work, this is not a bad day at all. Especially when we have a head start on bait. That's right. So, so you got value? No, nope. no, no, we got pilchards. So not as many as we wanted. We wanted to get a lot more, but that's fishing. You know, some days they're on the bait spots, other times. I mean, they're just not there. And yeah. they really weren't there that thick today, but that's fine. And where are we gonna be fishing, off the reef? Right off the edge. Okay. Um, probably in around 100, 150 feet. So let's go see what we can get done, see if we can pull on some fish. This is a fish. Nah, that's not a fish. You think? I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we got a fish on right now, baby. Here, go over the top of that rod right there, Stephanie. No telling what it is. Very good initial run. Just got out here and it is absolutely beautiful. I mean, blue skies. I mean, easily about, I don't know, I'd say 80 degrees. It's springtime. Oh, what Things is that? Things are looking great. I don't know. I'm gonna take off this weight. Hopefully, we can get a look at whatever this fish is. Hold on. Here, where is he? So right now, the line is wrapped around the rod tip. So we gotta make sure we got a king, baby, in the boat. How Flashes in the that? face and everything. <laughs> that is sweet right there. Oh my gosh, that's my first king! That's your first kingfish? Yes! All right, we definitely gotta get a picture then. Oh, well, we're on, double, double. So Stephanie's hooked up, just caught that king right there. Fishing's on right now, baby. Let's see what Stephanie's got now. Nice. It's right here, it's Look by the boat. this girl catching all the fish today. I don't even get a chance to grab a rod. Just gaff the king, put him in the boat. Oh, what is that? What is that? Something. It's a tuna. Yeah. It's, no, it's a bonita. bonita. That's cool though. We'll keep him. There's other ones swimming with him. We'll keep Are him. Are you sure that's a Let's see. Yeah. Is it a bonita? Is that a bonita? Yeah, it's a bonita. Yeah. We'll keep him and use him as uh, some deep drop bait. So let's get some more back in the water, see what we can catch.
Come on, baby. Getting up on them a little bit. Put those muscles to use. Try to bring them up as fast as possible. So what we're doing right here, guys, we got four rods out and we're just drifting. We're not anchored. We have two rods, one on the front, one on the back, that are just on top, no weight, nothing, just drifting. And then we have two more rods that are on the bottom. This one was on the bottom. And um, so far we've caught fish on both today. We've caught a bonita on the top rod, and then we've caught a kingfish on the bottom rod, which you guys just saw. And um, this one, we're just gonna keep on bringing up. And I gotta tell you, this bite has been pretty hot today. It has been. And that was my first kingfish, so I'm super pumped to cook that thing up. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. I gotta tell you, this is a or good fish. fish. I don't know, I don't think this is a shark. I don't think it is either. It's fighting Come on, baby. way too good to be. Let's go. I don't think it's a shark. Oh. It's fighting really good. So that's the luxury of the clip off weight, guys. You what can reel that? this leader all the way into the rod tip so you don't have to hand line the fish, which is important for a big fish like this. Does it look like a shark? Oh, it is a shark. Dang is it. it a shark? And it's tied. And he's got our line too. No, it's not! It's a big, big yellow gap jack. Gap. Get the gap. Where's the gap? Get the gap. It's Ooh. right there. Big yellow jack. Oh so these God. are actually delicious for, for sushi, sushi, guys. Get them, get them. There we go, baby. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> nice gap shot too. Man, that is sweet. Look at the size of this fish too. <laughs> that is a big old yellow jack right there, baby. Woo-hoo-hoo. Eating good, baby. Good oh, job. Yeah. Awesome. I'm so excited. Awesome job. Next time to shine, baby. So for those of you that don't know, Nick has filmed a lot of the Life by the Bow videos and he'll drive two hours just to make it here to do the job. So I think it's more than fair. Stephanie says she appreciates him. I can't tell Nick enough every single time we get done filming how much I appreciate him being here, but I think all of you guys should write it down in the comments how much you appreciate Nick being here to make it happen. And every once in a while, he gets to pull on a fish, so hopefully it's a good one. Or you got a yellow, uh, yellow tuna, right? This thing has fought way longer than that yellow jack did. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's on got, the yeah, I'm starting to think it's a big shark, too. Oh, there he is. It's not a shark. What is it? I don't know, but it's something. You see it? Uh, is that a shark? I, I don't see think the color, so. too. I don't know what that is. Doesn't look, it's it not. doesn't really look like a shark. It doesn't. <laughs> no, it's a big AJ. Big AJ. Don't gap it. Don't gap it. Big AJ. I mean, if we really wanted to keep an amberjack, that's the one to keep right there. That thing is a stud AJ. Yeah, that, whatever that is, it's got some life in it. I can't even tell you what number of fish this is. I mean, we've been catching all day. Edge of the reef is on fire. It's springtime in the Florida Keys. Let I'm me tell so, you. I'm just so excited. I mean, it's hot. We don't have to deal with the cold anymore. I mean, that's why we live here because we do not like cold weather. But luckily we've been saying shark all day long and it still hasn't happened, so. Hopefully, I'm not the one crescenting the boat with the shark today. Hopefully, we got a good fish. This one was on the bottom rod, too. For those of you that may be concerned, this is a custom Key Largo rod, 30 pound class rod. We got 30 pound suffix 832 braid, and we have a 7,500 pen slammer that we're using here. So, if you guys want to come down here to the Florida Keys, you want to know what gear to have, you can catch just about anything on this. Tarpon, mutton snapper, amber jacks, yellow jacks, you know, anything Tuna. that swims. Yeah, now when you go inshore, you might want to go down to some smaller rods for like redfish and snook, but this is even a great rod for a big snook or even a big redfish if you wanted. But if you're going to come out here, you're going to go offshore fishing, do some reef stuff can't go wrong with this. Even a 6500 would work great, but 7500 is definitely getting the job done too. 
Grouper! Oh, oh my yeah. god, man. What? This is killing me right now. Look at the size of this red grouper. I need a lobster in his yeah, mouth! Yeah, check that out. That's insane. Look, look, look. So first things first, grouper out of season. So this absolutely kills me to see this because I have to throw this thing back. But that is a whole lobster tail that just came out of his mouth. Wow. And he has the antenna in there and everything. I'm gonna try to shove that back in there. <laughs> try to give it to him. So right now that grouper's in the live well just to keep him alive. The fact that we brought him up from 120 feet, his swim bladder is all blown out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop him back down to the bottom with the descending device. I'll show you guys exactly how to use it. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is we're gonna send this grouper back down on this descending device. And this is absolutely imperative. Everybody should have one of these on their boat if they are bottom fishing, just because when these fish come up to the surface, they blow up the, their air bladders, excuse me. You want to be able to send them back down. So this is basically a big old hook with a one pound weight. I got this on Amazon. You can just, you know, get on there and basically look up fish descending device. Oh, he just threw up more of the lobster. And basically, this is just gonna take him and send him all the way back down. So as soon as this rod stops, I know he's ended his descent. And there's no barb on that hook, so once it gets there, all I have to do is just yank up, and he'll come right off, and he's right back down on the bottom, and um, hopefully he makes it. So let's see. Yep, came off. Perfect. Alrighty guys, we got another first here on Life by the Bow. We're going to show you cleaning up the kingfish here. And um, we're just going to go ahead and pull this fillet right off the side of him. And then we're going to take him upstairs and get to work on him. So for those of you that don't know, the shirt I'm wearing right now it's called Avail Performance Gear, and it just so happens that it is my clothing company. Right now, since spring is coming up, we wanna hook you guys up. We're having a 20% off sale on all performance shirts. So make sure you guys head up to the site, go and buy yourselves a shirt, because I can promise you, you guys will not be disappointed. Moisture wicking material, mesh in all the areas prone to sweat, it's just a great shirt overall. Tonight is going to be an interesting evening. Reason being is because we are going to do a smoked fish dip without a smoker. How are we gonna do that, do you ask? Well, we are gonna stick it in the oven and we're gonna use our lovely liquid smoke sauce to give it that smoky taste. And then once it's done cooking, we're gonna whip up our dip and then just add the fish to it. And all we need is some sour cream, some Worcestershire sauce, Tabasco, jalapeno, celery, an onion, and we're gonna need a knife to chop all this up, mix it all together, and then we are going to just use these crackers to dip it in and have this amazing, tasteful smoked fish dip. So, our fish is smoked by the oven, 
and I'm just gonna chop up my vegetables, add all my ingredients into the mixing bowl, and then we've got ourselves our dip. When you dip, I dip, we dip. Hey. <laughs> So right now, I'm just adding all of my ingredients into this food processor, so that way it breaks up everything and you have like a really consistent dip. All right guys, so we had a cold front run through. And let me tell you, there is nothing like sitting outside, enjoying this beautiful backyard, and eating homemade fish dip. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually really excited to try and see how this tastes. And I don't really know how I feel about it. Gotta add your Tabasco. Yeah, for me, Cholula. Stephanie likes Tabasco. I but do. And this that... meat was super dark mm -hmm. when I was filleting it. Not a white meat at all. So I don't know. The fact that we didn't really smoke it and we just added that extra seasoning, this should be pretty interesting. Yeah, and I was a little hesitant because I've never tried to make fish chip and I've never eaten kingfish before. So, <laughs> does it taste good? I'm gonna be 100% honest. Mm -hmm. That's it's really, really good. Really good. Mm. That is super good. And you can actually taste that little smoky flavor from mm. that seasoning we added. Honestly, I'm, I'm really, really impressed. This is really good. Yeah, I did not expect that to turn out as good as it actually did. So there you have it. You don't need mm. a smoker to make smoked kingfish dip. Nope. And we got to get to bed, oh, finish yeah. this up, because we're actually going out tomorrow to film another one back to back. But... It's just so motivating with all of your guys' support. Mm -hmm. Write down in the comments. Let us know what you thought. Yep. Hit the like button. Helps us out a ton. And subscribe um, button. Mm -hmm. And notification bell. But till then, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. <laughs>